it, Doc. I'm your witness. Claim it officially. By the grace of God, and the name of the United States of America, I take possession of this planet on behalf of and for the benefit of all mankind. Even before the days of sci-fi Saturday matinee movies like the one you saw there, traveling to the moon has been a dream throughout much of human history. And the idea of one day visiting the object we all see in the sky has inspired art throughout the ages. Now a new exhibit inspired by the Apollo 11 anniversary is showcasing images from the whimsical to the scientific. This week, we got a chance to visit. This is a, um, a lunar atlas that was created at the Paris Observatory. At the start of the last century, the race to photograph the moon uh, led to this, the world's first photographic atlas of the lunar surface, published by two French astronomers in 1910. It's part of a new exhibition at New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art called Apollo's Muse, the Moon in the Age of Photography. Mia Feynman is the curator. We began with Galileo. He, in 1610, he published a book uh, called Sidereus Nuncius, or Starry Messenger, and that was the first drawing and description of the moon as seen through a telescope. Galileo's depictions revolutionized scientific and cultural thought about the moon. No longer was it the unblemished lunar orb of Greek mythology, but instead a world of its own, with a landscape of craters, mountains, and valleys. More than 200 years later, the invention of photography deepened our knowledge and understanding of the moon. These are some of the earliest surviving daguerreotypes with cameras that required 30 minutes to capture an image. The scientist had to sit there you know, with the camera for 30 minutes, but he also had to move the telescope because, remember, the moon is moving across the sky. So in 30 minutes, it's going to move a little bit. And so you need to keep, in order to keep it in focus, you need to move the telescope. Together, the pieces lay out the intersection of science, art, and popular culture. This Italian lithograph pays homage to Moon Mania 1830s style. That's when satirical articles in the New York Sun claimed that scientists using powerful telescopes had spotted life on the moon, including tiny animals and humanoid creatures. Readers believed the stories were real. It was known as the Great Moon Hoax, uh, but it was really intended as a satire. Uh, except that it was so well done that nobody, it, was, it fooled everybody. <laughs> At the turn of the century, posing with lunar cardboard cutouts was all the rage. The closest humans would get to the moon, until that moment also presented in the exhibit, the moon landing 50 years ago today. What is it about the moon that you think has so captivated artists and photographers? Well, the moon is a paradox. It's always there, it's always present, but it's always changing. Some nights we see it, some nights we don't. It's close, and yet it's always out of reach. So it's sort of this, it's, it's a real symbol of desire, of you know, this, this melancholy and longing you know, for something that we can't quite reach.